we will start this video by looking at the grade 11 parabola. So let's start off. How do we know if a equation that has been given to us is a parabola? We should recognize the following. y equals to x squared. The important part that makes something a parabola is that part over there. Please note that that is very similar to an exponential graph which looks as follows. And here on the right we have an exponential graph. The main difference is that an exponential graph has the x in the exponent whereas the x is the base for a parabola. So please make sure that you do not confuse those two. The equation that you can see would have a graph that looks as follows. That is a standard parabola where the turning point is at 0, 0. We can now modify this parabola to make it move upwards and downwards as we saw in grade 10, but now in grade 11 we can also make it move left and right. Let's see how we would have to modify the formula to do that. Having a plus 1 written in the formula causes the graph to be shifted one unit upwards, and so the new graph would look as follows. And so now we can see that the, gra the original parabola has been shifted one unit upwards, but all the rest, the, the, the shape of the graph and everything else stays the same. So these coordinates were 0, 0. These coordinates would be 0 for the x value and 1 for the y value because it has shifted one unit upwards. We are now going to look at the new feature for grade 11, which is being able to translate a graph. We are now going to look at the new feature for grade 11, which is the ability to transfer a graph horizontally. We will do that as follows. And there we can see the new, the, or the new part for grade 11. To show that a graph has been shifted horizontally, you go to where the x value was and you modify the x value only. So the way you show that is by putting it in brackets. Okay, now one extra thing that's very important. With horizontal shifts, so shifts to the left and to the right, you have to think in opposites. So saying minus 2 does not shift the graph left, it actually shifts the graph, graph right. So the resulting graph from that equation would appear as follows. Here we can see a rough sketch of what that parabola would look like. Let's analyze it carefully. We know that from this part over here, it's a horizontal shift, which is the new feature for grade 11. x minus 2 means it's actually going to go two places to the right. So there it's gone two places right. Remember, the turning point started over there. So it's moved two places to the right. And then the plus 1 moves it upwards. And so this is the new turning point. Okay, so that is what that graph will look like over there. There is one extra feature in the parabola, and I'm going to explain that now. So we've looked at what this number does, we've looked at what this number does, but we haven't really understood this number. All that that number does is tell you whether the graph is happy or sad, so whether it looks as follows, or it could look as follows. If A is, or if this number in the front is positive, then it's a smiling graph. If that number is negative, then it's an unhappy graph. The value itself simply tells you whether the arms are far apart or close together. So that will be shown as follows. So what I have tried to depict in these two diagrams is that the larger the number in front of the x squared, the more narrow the graph is or the more closer the arms are together. But that really you guys aren't going to have to worry too much about what that number does. I'm just explaining its purpose, but they're never going to try to test you on that or anything like that. So don't worry too much, it's just out of interest. I'm now going to explain one more thing about that number that I've just mentioned. The important thing about that number is that if it is negative, then the graph will look unhappy. So negative, unhappy. If it's positive, then it's happy, smiling. That's a more important part of that number that you do need to know. Whether it's a 2 or a 3, that doesn't really matter. 
now that we have a better idea of what each part of the equation does to the graph, let's get into a good habit or let's practice how to do a sketch graph of the parabola. Please note that this example or this activity is not intended to take long. It's not, you don't have to worry about finding the exact x-intercepts or y-intercepts. All that we are practicing in this activity is whether you know that the graph has moved up, down, left or right, and whether it is happy or sad. In the next part of future videos, we're going to look at the specific details of how to draw the graph. We'll start with number one. So number one is definitely a parabola because it's got x squared. The x is not the exponent. It's a happy ex um, parabola because the number in the front is not negative. And then this minus four, because it's not in brackets with the x, it means it's, it's not a horizontal shift, it's a vertical shift. So it's moved four units down. And so that graph would look as follows. And so there we can see that graph sketched. Note that the turning point, which originally starts at 0, 0, has not moved left or right. It has only moved down. Okay? We don't know what the exact x-intercept values are, but we are not interested in that in this activity. Let's start with number 2. For number two, we can see that it's definitely a smiling parabola because the number in the front of the bracket, or in front of the x, sorry, is not negative. It has moved one unit to the right. Remember, the horizontal shifts are opposite. Minus means to the right, plus means to the left. And then it has also moved four units down. And so the new turning point will be located as follows. And there we have the parabola because you must remember that the turning point always starts at 0, 0 originally. It was then moved one place to the right and then four units down. And so the new turning point is 1 and minus 4. Once again, we don't know exactly where this value, this value, or this value is. But as I said, in the future examples, we will practice how to find those points. We can now go to the next example. For number three, let's an we can analyze the various parts of that equation. We now see that it's a negative, meaning it's going to be a upside down parabola. It's been shifted one unit to the right because it says minus one, which means to the right, and it's been shifted four units upwards. So without having to worry about this being plus or minus, we can still go and locate the turning point by moving one place to the right and four units up. And there we can see that parabola drawn. It's a sad parabola, shifted one place to the right and four units up. With number four, the number in the front is positive, so it's a happy graph. This plus four means that it's actually gone four units to the left, and this plus three means three units up. So it's going to be four units left and three units up, and so that is what that graph would look like there. The turning point, which always starts at 0, 0, gets moved 4 units left, 3 units up, and it's a happy graph. And now we can start with number 5. Analyzing number 5, we can see the number in front of the bracket. Whenever I say that's positive, it's because there isn't a number there at the moment, and so we know that that's just an imaginary 1, which is positive. The minus 6 tells us that the graph has shifted 6 units right not left, it must be to the right because it says minus, it's opposite to what you would naturally think, and then two units up. So the turning point will be located at six and two, and then it's a happy graph. The last part of this video will we'll talk about how to correctly draw a parabola. So how to do it the proper way, and then in the next video we'll do many examples. So find, drawing a parabola is a three-step process. You will need to do, or you'll need to have, the following three things. You will need the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the turning point. To do the x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. To do the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0. And then there will be three ways to find the turning point, which I will discuss with you. In this, in this example. The equation that we are going to use for our example is y equals x squared minus 7x minus 5. So let's start with step 1, the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, you make y 0. 
you would then try factorize. If not possible, you could use the quadratic formula. And there you have the quadratic formula. So you could plug all the values into that equation. And if you do that, you're going to get two x-intercept values of, and so there we have our two x-intercepts, which can then be placed on the diagram. We could then find the y-intercept by making x zero. We could then find the x-intercepts. We could then find the y-intercept by making x zero. You could then plug that into your calculator and get an answer of y equals to negative 5. You can then place that on the diagram. And then the last step would be to find the turning point. In which case, there are three methods. But in this example, we will only be able to use two. And I'll show you the third one afterwards. So the first method is to find the middle value between your two x-intercepts, between this x-intercept and this x-intercept. So to do that, you just add them together. So you add those two values together, the minus 0 0.65 and the 7.65, and then you divide that by 2. It's like taking the average. That's one way to do it. The other way is to use a turning point formula. Now that turning point formula can be located within the quadratic formula. The part that is highlighted in red is the formula that can be used to locate the x value of the turning point. And so let's give the second method a try. So you simply go and type in minus b over 2a on your calculator. As you would normally use the full formula, now you only use, need to use a small part of it. And that's going to give you an x value for the turning point as... So the x value of the turning point is 3.5. So if you have the x value of the turning point, it's 3.5. But we now need to find the y value. So many people straight away say make y equal to 0. But that's how you find x-intercept. So if we know that the x value of the turning point is 3.5, then we simply plug 3.5 into the original equation to find the y value of the turning point. And so there we have the y value as minus 17.25. So now we can go locate those two coordinates on the diagram. And now we are at a point where we can draw the parabola. So I didn't get all the, the lines perfectly connected to the dots, but that's okay. You, I'm sure you guys understand the procedure. What I now need to do is just explain the last method of finding the turning point, which can only be used under certain circumstances. So now we're going to talk about the turning point form. So remember in the previous slide, it was quite easy to locate the turning point. That was because those equations were written as follows. So when your equation is given like this, instead of written in the normal trinomial way, then we can get the turning point straight away. We know that this is a parabola that has shifted one unit to the right and four units up. And so the turning point, which always starts at 0, 0, would also move one unit right and four units up. And so the turning point for that equation, or for that parabola, would be at 1 and 4. So we call this the turning point formula for a parabola, or the turning point form, sorry. So if you are given an equation in that form already, then you can get the turning point straight away. If it is given to you in a trinomial kind of way, then you are going to have to use either that method or that method. I hope that makes sense. In the next video, we'll practice some examples.